And good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in. You're watching a special edition of One on One Conversation with your girl, Raw Silk, brought to you by the Crossley Coleman Group and G Comics. We are here, and of course, with the one and only Mr. LP of Enliven Global Media. And I am honored to be sitting here having a two in one conversation. <laughs> Okay, with two queens in the city of Richmond. So I have um, our candidate for Richmond City Treasurer, Ms. Michelle Mosby. Yes, hello. And yes, there would be no Michelle Mosby without Ms. <laughs> Leela Smith. And we yes. just call her mom. So mom, thank you so much for coming. I, you know, this is like fantastic because I know for me, my mom is my greatest cheerleader. Yes. So it's like so awesome to <laughs> see when mom walked in the door. I was like, oh, you know you're getting in this interview. <laughs> and so, so we're going to talk. We're going to meet. I mean, I don't know many people in the city that don't know who Michelle is, but we're going to give you an intimate look into who Michelle is, um, why she has this passion. We're going to ask her mom what values and things did she instill in her to even make her persevere over and over again for the people. So, Michelle, thank you so much for coming Thanks out. Thanks again. I appreciate you. And I know we had some difficulties trying to get this thing with people driving through a building and everything. <laughs> yes, but yes. we're we going to be all right. So, I know, let's let's just jump right into this. Okay, for those people who don't know, tell us about Michelle Mosby. Who is Michelle Mosby? Um, Michelle Mosby, I am a Richmond uh, native. Um, I was born here in Richmond at Richmond Memorial Hospital. Um, uh, for those of you that don't remember, it was on the north side of Richmond. Um, I have, uh, I'm an only child uh, to my mom. <laughs> and uh, my dad, uh, he worked here in the city of Richmond. He worked at Philip Morris for about 30 years. And my mom worked at a plant in Richmond off Hopkins Road called David M. Lee. Um, and so, um, then our lives kind of moved us around and we lived in Chesterfield and then my life brought me back to the city of Richmond. And so, um, it's, it's been a myriad of things that brought me here. Um, friends, uh, just, uh, first and foremost, um, I like houses, I like real estate, I like things of that nature. And so I have, I worked at Verizon for about eight, nine years. Um, I worked for, for Verizon. I then decided to go into real estate in 2006. And so then I became an associate broker there. Uh, 2008, I then um, had a few friends that had gone to penitentiary or gone to jail. And I began to watch them, you know, have issues as it relates to finding job, finding housing, that type of thing. And so um, I, I sat on the floor and God gave me a vision of a nonprofit called Help Me Help You. And so, um, reaching out to folk, trying to put that whole nonprofit together, um, and then calling people in the city, trying to see if I could get, you know, the end to helping to facilitate a solution to the issue. And the city told me that they kind of had it all under wraps. They kind of had it all together, and they didn't. Don't you just listen? We we know how that goes, which basically <laughs> translates to we supposed to do it, but it ain't gonna get done. Well, okay. <laughs> So um, I kept persevering um, as it relates to that. Uh, God allowed some things to happen in my life that at that moment, I guess I would have said they were a complete tragedy um, because the real estate market crashed. And so life then trans, I mean, it, it, it spiraled. And so I ended up at one of my uh, rental properties that I had in the city. And that's kind of where I've been for the last, I'd say, six, seven years. Um, 2012, um, I began to really get my mind wrapped around trying to press forward with the nonprofit again. And I reached out to our, so our then uh, council member who said he was going to get back with me. He never did. I kind of got mad at him, and then I ran, and I beat him. <laughs> um, and so that's kind of how I catapulted into politics. Um, got on council and then realized there was a whole lot more to this thing than just the thought process that I had as it relates to returning citizens. Um, it was seeing how our young people were being educated and how um, everything kind of meshes. Um, it's not really where one thing is isolated. It's seeing our young people, it's seeing them uh, not graduating 
to seeing them going into a life of crime, to seeing um, us not uh, work to change the uh, living wage, the minimum wage. It's just a, a lot of things that was like, oh my gosh, we really, really have a lot to do, a lot of work to do. And so um, from there, it's just been trying to see what we can do in the city of Richmond to make real change, to change the lives of people, um, to help people be at their best. And so that's kind of where okay. my thought process came from. Okay. So now, I, I know you said, because when we talked off camera, politics really wasn't something that you <laughs> foresaw in your future, but then, you know, you get so many accolades from being on, you know, city council and some of the things that you implemented there. One of the questions that I always ask um, young women in politics, especially women of color, how difficult did you find it being a woman in politics and a woman of color in particular? Um, it's difficult. And it's difficult from many different aspects. It's, uh, it's, it's dealing with uh, men who see you as the woman mm -hmm. and, and, and dealing in that place. It's dealing with um, being a black woman and, and people coming from that aspect, but it's also difficult woman to woman um, from our own race. Yeah. And so uh, it's, been, it's been something. Um, I, I, I became our first African-American uh, woman president of council. And, you know, I, I, not about Michelle, but it's just about understanding that it's 2017 and we really shouldn't have been just getting to the first. Mm -hmm but we are. And so we need to really kind of have these moments in time where our young people can understand that it's never too late. Mm -hmm. Keep pushing. You can be the first something. You know, just, it, 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 I, I just wish that we would take on the role of, of, of uniting more so than anything. I think that if we united more, then having the, the black and white conversation wouldn't be so complicated mm -hmm. because I would know I have back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And so it, it, it's, it's been a difficult road. Absolutely. But somebody's got to do it. And somebody's <laughs> got to do it. Okay, so let's talk about this. I always say let's talk about the elephant in the room because this is something that you and I talked about. So you ran for mayor. Yes. And unfortunately lost to LaVar Stoney. And how was that roller coaster ride of a campaign and then catapult you to even come back in to politics again. Well, you know, it's funny that you say um, the word unfortunately, and I've been reading in the paper a lot where people always say um, unsuccessful run, but because I believe in calling, it was as successful as it was supposed to be for me. Um, me and Mayor Stoney have a very good relationship, and I'm excited about the fact that he's our mayor. Um, I believe that that one prepared me for this one. Okay. I had, um, I have already, uh, during that moment in time, done this. I've gone door to door, and I've done it citywide. Prior to this, uh, the mayor's race, I had only, you know, been in the council, but that race put me out there to be able to actually reach, you know, a lot more people. And so now, doing it for treasurer, it's it's all hat to you. You're absolutely, custom, custom absolutely. I, I kind of know how to make some things happen because of that particular race. And so um, others see it as, as one way, and I, I really do see it as another. I think that's a good um, thing that you said because one of the things that I like about you is people know you. They know your face. You've been on their front porch. You've talked to them. And one of the things that we always talk about is people that show up in your neighborhoods and kiss your baby when they want something, <laughs> okay? Right. Everybody comes in your neighborhoods and kiss your kids, but they don't come back. Right. And, and, and you did, and people talk about that, and they remember that. I'm going to jump to mom for a minute, okay? Because, like, mom, they say, I just love her mother, okay? <laughs> she is like, you know, you can tell she's an only child, okay, because she's spoiled, trust and believe. But, mom, for you, how proud are you of Michelle? If I could sum it up in three words, I would say, I'm delighted that God gave me a share. Okay. Summing it up in three words. Okay. Um, 
after I got married, I really didn't want any children. I just, my husband and I was to work and travel. But when I got pregnant with Michelle and she came along, my whole life changed for the better because I had to prepare to invest in her life. Uh, I grew up and I couldn't read, and I'm not ashamed to tell these things now based on what God has done for me. I grew up and I couldn't read, so my baby was smart. She'd come home every day and sit at that table, and this is a little touchy for me. She'd sit at that table and she would do our homework, made good grades, stayed on the honor roll. I didn't have to help her because I already knew I couldn't. And as she grew up, I began to try to read to her because I, I love to read now. And I knew reading was going to be her best thing. If she could read, she could travel anywhere. I would wash her hair, put a book up on the sink, wash her hair, and look like I was reading out of the book to her. One day, she grew older, and she looked up at me and said, Mommy, that's not in that book. <laughs> she said, that's not. I said, well, if it's not in the book, then you read the book to me. And she took the book and began to read it to me. I knew she was special because she loved God's people. Um, she would go to school. And by her being my only child, I, I, I did the best. I put the best daughter because she was my only child. And she would come back home every day. Not one, every day. She would be gave her sneakers away. <laughs> she would be gave clothes away. Mm -hmm. And I would call the school trying to find out where her stuff is. Stuff. And the teacher wouldn't even know that she had did it. Okay. So I knew it, it was something special about her because she always kept my house full of children. They ate there, they slept there, and they stayed there. She has always loved people. She's always willing to make sure that they had what they needed. And most children that's uh, only child usually be selfish. Mm -hmm. She's selfish about one thing. You can call me now and mama, but she's not going to let you call her daddy, daddy. Okay. <laughs> she puts them down. If you say your, her the daddy, stops right there. Yes. that's not your daddy. You have to call okay. him Papa or Mr. Smith. Okay. So I am grateful. And I've been out, we've been campaigning for three months, seven days a week. And I've been walking with her three months, seven yes, days I a see. week. And I have enjoyed every moment of it. She can go through some things that when I go home, I'm kind of a little disarray about it. Because I don't like how you talk to my baby. Mm -hmm. But she'll say real quick, Mommy, that's just the way it, it is. is. And she goes off. That's the way it so is. I'm proud to be Michelle's mother. Mm -hmm. If I had to make that choice again to have a girl, I would want Michelle. Well, I think that Michelle is, is equally as proud Absolutely. of you. Absolutely. It's equally as proud of you. Because, yes. And I thank you so much for sharing that story because it gives so much more meaning and substance to who she is as a person. And that same fight, that same fight when they were telling her things at city council and she go, that ain't what this is. Okay? So that, that comprehension. And there's nothing, you know, the testimony of coming from a beginning where she had to study and learn on her own absolutely nothing wrong with that because I can see from the first time that we met you are one of her biggest fans one of her biggest cheerleaders and it makes sense because I, I know my mom always you know watching and that's my baby that's and right. she keeps giving you those that's my baby moments so that's that's a beautiful definitely a beautiful testimony and one of the other things that you said about the people one of the things I have a friend named Maurice who is a big Michelle fan and he always talks about that's one of the things he said Michelle is about the people so now the people can see that she really is about the people okay ever since she was a kid it's not a campaign slogan okay so tell me what is your um, platform we talked about let's talk about the treasurer and what the treasurer does and everything because a lot of people were like the treasurer and then I was like oh great and then when I heard I was like that's it but then you and I had a conversation, and then it became so much more. Yes. So tell us about that. Well, um, today, we're going to talk about what it does today. Today. So today, um, the Treasurer's offered Office, if you are called to jury duty, uh, you are paid a $30 stipend. That stipend comes from our Treasurer's Office today. Um, the current Treasurer handles, uh, or she does taxes for many of the residents in the city today. And that is kind of where the buck has stopped. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there was a moment in time where notary, being, you know, doing the notary service that was a part of, you know, what was happening in the in the trainer's office. And I'm going back to the most recent things, um, uh, fishing and hunting licenses. Those types of things were offered in the treasurer's office as well. Um, policies and laws changed the fishing and hunting licenses. Um, decades ago, the finances were done in the treasurer's office, and then they were taken and put into our finance department. And so, with that being said. Um, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, whether we should have a treasurer's office or whether we shouldn't. Today we do, and that's that's the biggest thing for me. Um, it, it, November seventh, um, on November eighth, you're still going to have a treasurer's office. In January one, you're going to have a treasurer's office. So even the conversation doesn't affect the next four years. So we, as a city, can either determine that we are going to allow it to do nothing or we're going to choose someone that has a track record of um, starting from ground zero and making things happen. And so, um, as a business owner, I started from ground zero. And today, I have a um, business with nine employees. Um, started from zero, have a nonprofit that now works to employ and house returning citizens. Um, and so we need that going into our treasurer's office. Someone that has that type of ability to make it from ground zero take off to the next chapter. So I'd like to see in our treasurer's office, I was on city council, had an opportunity to build relationships. And you have to have intergovernmental relationships Absolutely. to make this work. Mm -hmm. So when we look at um, policies and laws, when we talk about fishing and hunting licenses, sports, those were some of the things that policies, when we talk about our General Assembly members, they changed and tweaked some laws so that those services were pulled out. So in order to get those services even put back in, you have to have a relationship with your General Assembly members. Um, and so I was able to pass legislation even on council that affected our General Assembly members and, and our governor. And so that legislation even went statewide. And so it's about getting buy-in. You got to have buy-in. When we talk about um, working with our finance department, perhaps um, payments. Well, some people would say, well, Michelle, we have offices that take payments, and we don't need to, to add you know, services into our treasurer's office. Well, I believe that a city that is uh, proactive versus reactive is a city that sells. Mm -hmm. So we are a city today of 200,000 people, and we are a city that is um, growing at every moment. We have Manchester that has, I mean, boomed, it's growing. And so we're looking at uh, Jefferson Davis that is about to get 145 new apartments there. And so that, are, that is new residents coming into the city. We're working feverishly to fix our schools. That's going to bring new families. And so for me, it's about making sure that our treasurer's office has the services when you get here, when things are here, providing for the residents that are here, you shouldn't have to wait in a line uh, a, a, a million people to get services. We should have it in places where you can get pay your tax uh, bills if you choose to in your treasurer's office. Um, we're adding services like tax amnesty. Mm -hmm. We ought to be able to offer that service in your tre in your treasurer's office as well. We offer tax exemption for seniors. Uh, they need to know that. As I've been canvassing, what I realized is they don't know that these these right. things are there, and so we need to be. The, uh, the, the, the place where you get all your finance related questions answered. We need to be that hub for you between you and the, the citizenry and finance. We need to be that, that place for you. Um, and so it's going to take relationship with your finance. I was there when uh, our finance director was hired. We have a very good relationship. I have asked her, had a conversation to say, is this feasible? Is this possible that we can work together and make the treasurer's office and the finance department work together? And the answer I received was yes. That's relationships that you have to have. When we talk about things such as financial literacy, and we want to teach that to our youth, and we want to teach that to our, our adults, um, it's going to take uh, relationships. 
uh, I was on the Greater Richmond Partnership Board, which is a board that you know helps bring uh, jobs into the the city, Hanover, uh, Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Yeah, it's it's a conglomerate of all the supervisors and and city um, supervisors on a board. And so with that, um, I got an opportunity to, to meet some great people. Uh, one man, M and T Bank. This is what he does as far as financial literacy at M and T Bank. He's waiting. January one, call me. Let's get that done. Um, I, I've met some other people that uh, uh, work for Southside. Let's get this done. Not only that, but when we talk about our youth, we're talking about a person that was the chair of career tech education for the city of Richmond. And so it was getting a team of people together, school board members included, and, and making recommendations to the school board that they accepted our, and are using today. So I already have the, the ability to pull people together and to, to, to put real things in, in process. When we want to te teach financial literacy to our young people, you have to have the buy-in from school board members. Today, I have the buy-in that says, if we can pull this thing together, will you all put a resolution in to help this move forward? And the answer has been yes. And so I, I, I just think that we have to be very careful when we're moving forward as it relates to this particular office and making sure that we're putting someone in the office that understands business, period, period. and understands inter, uh, uh, intergovernmental relationships because you have to have them. You can't just go into this and think from ground zero you can build an empire and you don't have the connectivity to be able to make it work. And I am the only candidate today that has what is needed to be able to take this thing to its next level. There is no other candidate that can do it. Now they may can come in after me and after it's set up and the business is rolling and they manage it from there, but to start at ground zero and in four years the people of Richmond think it's a viable treasurer's office, I'm the only candidate that's going to be able to do it. And that is a good bullet point to stop there. So we're going to take a brief break. And when we come back, we'll continue talking to Mom <laughs> and, and Michelle. But keep that in mind. Michelle Mosby, candidate for treasurer. And we will be right back. And we are back once again. You are watching a special edition of the Sister to Sister Can We Talk show. And I'm sitting two on one, okay, with <laughs> Michelle Mosby and her mom, okay. And we are having a great conversation here. We're talking about um, Michelle's run for Richmond City Treasurer. Um, please go out and vote on November 7th. It is very, very important. Not showing up to vote. You might end up getting the wrong people in office, okay? So it is very, very important. If you're not sure where to go, we will be posting up at the end of this show where you can go to find out and make sure that you are registered um, to vote in the city of Richmond. For uh, You have sheriff, you have treasurer, we have our governor race, our lieutenant governor, our attorney general. So it is very, very important. If you are not happy... Well, what is going on in D.C., you need to start paying attention to your local elections. Everyone always wants to pay attention to the presidential elections without paying attention to your local elections. Understand that people on your local level have aspirations to go to higher levels of office. If you don't stop them on the lower level, then you may possibly end up in somebody in alignment with 45's agenda that can become more hazardous and dangerous to on this country. So we've been talking to um, Michelle Mosby. We've been talking about what she would like to see happen with the uh, city treasurer's office on January 1. The election again is on November 7. So Michelle, with that being said, I know we stopped um, and took a break when you said the, you know, you were the candidate Absolutely. to get that done because <laughs> of that. And I was like, you know, I love that because especially you want somebody that has that confidence, you know, that's a bold yeah. statement. Right. Okay. And so the, the fact that you said it with such authority makes me want to just go, okay, yeah, fine, okay. But what does November 8th look like if Michelle does not win treasurer's office? What does November 8th look like? Uh, well, I'm going to relax. <laughs> um, there's going to be a relaxing moment, and then I'll, I'll wait to hear more instructions from God okay. on what to do. Fair. Yeah, um, I, I believe that as long as there's a 26% poverty rate in the city of Richmond, and there's work to be done. 
one of the things that I want to mention because I know a lot of people had this question because I did so I'm going to ask it only because I want you to be able to answer it um, to people who may have the same question when you and I were talking um, some time ago and I was like okay well you ran for mayor and now why would you run for such a high office and now run for a treasurer especially a treasurer what it is and I thought your answer was very commendable can you share that with us well um, once again for me um, the treasurer's office I, I guess I don't look at it like most people look at it I look at it as um, this is our city and we want all of our city to be um, <laughs> at its best um, and so when the treasurer's position was brought to my attention um, and understanding what the treasurer's office does today and what our counterparts, uh, other localities and what their treasurer's office handle. For me, it was saying, you need to get in this race because we're the capital city. I believe that we should be leaders. I believe that whatever we do, it should be um, uh, in excellence. And so I want, in the next four years, I ran for this position because I believe that in the next four years, um, they'll have a different stance in the newspaper as it relates to what the city of Richmond's treasurer's office looks like and what it does for okay. the city of Richmond residents. And so I, I'm running because I'll insert myself wherever the need is. It, 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 it doesn't have to be this or that. It's the need. And the need today says that we have a treasurer's office that really doesn't provide the services to our city of Richmond residents. And, and, and we need and deserve them. And so I'm running for that reason. And I think that that was important to hear. So tell us a little bit about your nonprofit. Uh, nonprofit Help Me Help You Foundation, uh, 2008, that became um, the vision um, and began to put it on paper. Um, and today, it, it, it's, it's, I have an, the office is on Hall Street, 1618 Hall Street. And so today we have, we're, you know, many walk-ins, um, many people coming in the door that not only need jobs, but they need an array of things. Just, I mean, many services. Yes, I mean, we just yeah, yes, had a young man. Yeah, a absolutely, right, absolutely. Right. And so it's about um, being able to, even if, if HMHY doesn't uh, actually offer the service themselves, not sending you to find it. We, we, we need to do better at helping to facilitate the process of you getting what you need. Absolutely. Um, uh, it, it's too hard to, to come from somewhere and the deck is stacked against you and then we the people kind of want you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Many people have been gone for, a, I mean like years, 20 years. So Life has changed. Change. I mean like really changed. You've had um, mom and dad or whoever you were living with could have been living in a four bedroom. Mm -hmm. And the market crashed and now they're in a two bedroom. Mm -hmm. So that means there's no room for you. Mm -hmm. And so what does that world look like for that person? Mm -hmm. And so um, if we are about um, decreasing or, or eliminating homelessness, mm -hmm. then to not have a plan in place mm -hmm. for the returning citizen that will come home and not have a home is almost, right. you know, and so for me it's, how do we begin to put all the plans in place at one time? How do we not have tunnel vision, but have an ex expanded vision of when we, when we want to eradicate or we want to, to not have a, a, a city that is a population of homeless, then how are we working on this at the same time? Right. Okay. How are we doing things at the same time? So for me, HMHY is, once again, I'm all about that hub thing where you know where you're going, you know how to get there, and we're helping to direct you to that place. And so we've been able to provide a lot of employment um, through HMH Web. Uh, we've been in Gilpin and in Creighton um, on some Tuesdays and Thursdays, making sure that that population of people are, are um, you know, as the city does what it does, mm -hmm. that they're a part of um, get, getting some of the employment that's happening there too. So. so we're getting down to the wire. Yes. <laughs> really close to the wire. Yes. Between now and then, what do you what, what what is your plan? What do you have going on? Um, I'm a door knocker. So, I mean, 
we kind of, I think, <laughs> I think yesterday we was out there from sunup until it went down yesterday. And we would be there today if we weren't talking to okay. you. Okay. <laughs> I, I appreciate y'all walking here. Look, mom has the sneakers yes, on. She yes, has the yes, yes, on. Yes, yes. And I, I, I love it. Yes. I just absolutely love it. Mom's got a t-shirt. She's like, okay, we're ready. We're yes. definitely ready. Yes. And so the day of the, the polls, okay, um, we know that there's always a misunderstanding of where to go vote. Please go on to your local register's office, find out your precincts that you're supposed to go to. There's numbers out there. If you have any questions, um, to make sure that you're registered to vote, okay? Um, Michelle is running for city treasurer, so you have to be in the city of Richmond or you won't see her name on your ballot. And I say that because there's going to be loads of people watching this show and they're going to be like, that girl Raw Silk told me she was on the ballot. So, this is for the city of Richmond. So if you're a city of Richmond resident, you will see Michelle Mosby for treasurer on your ballot. Okay, so please look out for um, Michelle Mosby. We're going to see her, and uh, look, after the whole Victory thing, we'll yes. see mom with red, white, and blue balloons and things of that nature. Michelle, if someone wants to get in contact with you, how would they find you? Uh, you can reach me at my website, which is mosbyfortreasurer.com. I am on Facebook at Michelle R. Mosby. I am on Instagram and Twitter at Miss Help Me Help You. Um, and... Um, I think that's all my handles. I haven't reached the Snapchat moment yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that that's it. And my email address uh, as well is Mosby for Treasurer. And all of these are the number four. Mosby for Treasurer at Gmail. Mosby for Treasurer 17 at gmail.com. Mosby for Treasurer 17 at gmail.com. So again, this has been your girl, Raw Silk. Mom, <laughs> candidate Michelle Mosby, candidate for Richmond City Treasurer, please, we encourage you, go out and vote. If you came in half the way through the show, go to my Facebook page at Raw Silk or go to Alive and Global Media. We've been updating on the candidates and what's going on. It is so important. November 7th, we have got to get out Absolutely. and vote. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you for being thank my you. guest this evening. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, have a good evening. Thank you.